Okay. I think we're ready to get started here. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit so you can see me a little better. Um, hello, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, the topic of circling Gmail, as they called it. Um, and so, initially, when people started using Gmail, there was a way to send email to one person or to multiple people using what, what they call groups. You could set up in context a group of people and then email those people if you wanted to. But as the whole concept of Google Plus came to be, and Google Plus, of course, works with people and groups of people, which they call circles, things changed slightly in terms of how the different Google programs are integrated with each other and which capabilities are being built into different programs, including Gmail, including Contacts. Basically, a bunch of different programs uh, in the Google Apps that, um, ecosphere, if you will, wound up getting certain functionality that benefited many people uh, in various ways by integrating the capabilities of one um, application like Google Plus and it being built into other applications like Gmail and Contacts and uh, other Google Apps. And today I want to specifically discuss circles in Gmail because a lot of people uh, may have heard of the concept, may know of it, but they don't really use it at all. And that's what I want to concentrate on today. And so um, I think I'm going to pull up the screen share for Gmail here to make it um, a little easier to explain things. Let me just quickly do that. And... Um, there it is, and we'll switch over to Google. And to make it a little bit easier to read, I'm going to make the display just a tiny bit bigger, so it's easier for you to see what I'm talking about. I think it's big enough right there. So as you can see, you know I have a fairly busy, and most people, or a lot of people, I should say, do uh, Gmail interface. Up at the top here, we have our main things like inbox and sent mail and drafts and all this other stuff which is fine. Then below that we have circles and you can see it's got a little triangle next to it and it's right now in what they call what what's basically is closed position meaning you can't see the circles themselves but you can click on the um, little triangle there to expand it and then of course you see all of my circles there um, you know ton and ton and ton of different stuff there which of course makes it very difficult to manage and that's mainly what I want to get to today is how to manage it better. So it's useful, and we'll talk about why it's useful, but at the same time it's very difficult to see, especially if you make the screen bigger like this. Even if I go to the smallest screen, let me just jump back for a second to show you. If I go back to the uh, regular zoom like this, as you can see, you know, I have my contacts here, and I have my circles up there, and if I look at the circles here, you can see there's a big scrolling list in there. Even in that resolution, it's still tons of stuff. And of course, on top of circles, you also have labels. So if I click on close the circles triangle here, close that, then you have labels. And I specifically, as you can see, I have a very small list of labels. And uh, I have a lot more labels, but you don't see them here. And that's one of the things I want to talk to you about today, is how to make this a little bit easier to deal with. So. First of all, as you can see on the left side, I also have my contacts here, people who are online, people I can talk to, jump into a hangout. And uh, the first thing that you can do is you can actually get rid of it, eliminate it completely, um, but then you won't see and you won't be able to easily start conversations. So the solution to that problem before we get into circles on Gmail is to enable the Google Hangouts application, in, like in Chrome, for example, as a Chrome extension, and you simply pull it down and start it up right here. And you can see on my right side. And when you do it like this, you can see I can put my contacts are a lot bigger on this side, on the right side. On the left side here, I can then use the other variant of Gmail, which I can have my calendar visible to see what's, what's coming up, what's going on. So I have my quick links up here. I have my calendar up there, down over there. So I don't have my contacts on the left side, but I don't care because all of them are over here on the right, much more visible, much easier to see. And the additional little benefit of that approach is, is you notice that the typically what's happening on this side of the screen is there's a bunch of ads. 
and you know some of them may look at these ads and do something with them. If you're like me, you're not using Gmail for ads, so you basically skip them completely. And there is extensions do, that allow you to get rid of them, but the easiest thing to do is just to do exactly what I did, which is set up a, a Chrome extension for Hangouts, and then simply bring it up. That way, the right side of the screen winds up having a real nice display, without losing any functionality of all the people you have. And of course, the list is bigger, usually all the Hangouts that you um, normally want to talk to. You can start a new Hangout right from here. And also, it conceals all the ads behind it, so they're not in your face. So it's kind of a little tip for you right there in terms of organization of different things on the screen. So getting back to this thing, again, going back to the uh, situation with um, circles, is that by default, you see all of the circles on the left side here, right? And they work similarly in terms of functionality as your labels do, meaning that if I, for example, want to click on a particular circle name here, then I will see nothing but emails dealing with that particular, from people with that, from that particular circle. So it makes it very convenient if you, for example, have circles of people where you're dealing with specific either business topic or your vendors or whatever it might be. It's a really handy way to use circles in this particular context to just look at emails from people that are part of that particular circle. Okay, and that's, that's remember now that, that it's, it doesn't mean they're going to be talking about necessarily things that are business related. I mean, any of their emails would show up. It just means that the actual contact itself who happened to be in the circle and who emailed you, their email will show up when you click on any circle name on the left here. Okay, so if I want to click on uh, for example, Ben's kids who do Hangouts, then I get emails dealing with that. And I get all the people who normally deal with um, that partic those particular uh, that particular circle. So it's pretty handy to be able to do it. You know, I can still get you know go scroll all the way down, to find some labels, click on a label, and then I can see all the emails having to do with labels, uh, that particular label. So you can still do labels like you did before, but now you can also do circles, and so. Uh, if I wanted to see emails from anybody dealing with my takeout online business, I click on that, and I can see that I'm not getting emails from any of those people. But if I want to look, for example, at something like, uh, let's see, it would be a good one. Maybe, uh, now let's do Russian, for example. And then I get a bunch of emails, and uh, all of these people happen to be Russian because those are the people in the Russian circle. So very, very simple to use, uh, very, very simple to um, set it up and, and start using it without doing anything. But the key thing that I wanted to discuss and point out is that if you go to settings, then you can really put some extra muscle into this whole concept, which most people do not have currently set up on their Gmail, because by default, just one second, it comes up. Okay. <clears throat> so if I go here to my um, labels, it's actually not just labels, it's also, as you can see, it's got circles in there too. But basically, you go to your settings and you go to labels. And one of the things that they've added recently, which is very useful, is you can see where is next to the um, uh, next to your labels like drafts and spam and trash. Well, not trash, but spam and drafts. You have this new option called show if unread. You also have show and you also have hide. And what that means is that means that, for example, if I do not want to see the spam folder visible on the left side here on the left panel. I can easily hide it by clicking on the hide link right here. Note that when you look at these options, the actual selected options is in black, and the options that are selectable to change it would be blue with underscores. So it's kind of weird because it gives you an impression that by looking at it, maybe show is the current selection. It's not. That current selection here is actually hide, which is in black, which is not a link. The links are the ones that you can click on, so those are the ones that allow you to change. So right now, I, you can see that in my settings here, I'm basically showing, I'm hiding all of these. I'm hiding my start and 
important and, and the chats um, as a display here on the left side, but I am showing sent mail, so I can easily go to it, uh, and you can see, if I scroll up, you can see I got my send mail right up here, because clear, here it's set up to show send mail, and then over here, these new two options here for drafts and spam are show if unread, which is what I selected. So if I happen to have something in the drafts folder, then it will show up, uh, if, it's, if it's unread, it will show up here. But if I don't have anything in my drafts folder uh, that is unread, then it's not even going to show the word drafts on the left side here. And that's why it's pretty useful to try to minimize how much stuff you put here. So from an organizational standpoint, if you don't want to see drafts unless you have some unread drafts, you select show off and red. Okay? You do the same thing with the spam if you want to. Okay? But the thing that Google just leaves by default being hidden, as you can see right here, most of these are default here, and that's why you see all my circles. They're all show, 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 show. I don't necessarily want to see all of these selectable from the left side because you can see over here, it creates a jumble where there's just too many options. I mean, it takes forever to scroll, and so it's not very efficient. And so that's why Google gives you ability to hide pretty much as many of these as you want in this label list, this left side is called the label list, by simply clicking on the hide button. So if I don't want to see, um, for example, uh, post to save, as you can see right now, if I click on circle, there's post to save. If I don't want to see it, I can just click on hide. And now it's gone now. That's where it was before. Now it's gone. So you can this way use the hide feature to deactivate display on the left side of any of your circles that you currently have. Okay? And your circles serve two functions. Well, I shouldn't say serve two functions. Circles normally are used for two different purposes. One purpose is to get the content of people that you happen to circle because you want to see their content. The second reason is when you want to actually send something out as a message or, or a post to a group of people, then you can send them as a circle. So it's kind of like a group. So you basically have these two different functionalities. On one hand, you consume information. On the other hand, you send information. And you get to determine if it happens to be the same circle, where you can both read their content and send something to them, or if you want to segregate them into two different categories, where you have certain circles that you use for consuming information, and then you have a completely separate set of circles you use specifically for communicating with people in those circles. Okay? So this is over here on this side here, where I can select, for example, that I'd like to be able to see content from, for example, actors, but I typically do not communicate with these actors at all. I mean, we've got people like Al Pacino, I got people like Russell Crowe, I got people like Kevin Spacey. We don't exchange emails. So showing it on the left side of the screen, eating in space for me, would be total waste. So I would hide it. Okay, I can still get to them, but it doesn't make any sense to show it on the left side. Okay? So you would do the same thing with any of the circles that you have. Just kind of go through and click on hide on any of the circles that you do not want to see on the left side of the screen here because you would never be selecting them to see any emails from these people because you never communicate with them. And that will shrink down the display here, making it a little bit more manageable, maybe a lot more manageable. Okay? So that's one set. The second set here where it says show and message is even more important and more useful because in that side, this is where a display will occur in the actual message itself, in your message list, in other words. So case in point, one of my absolutely main circles where I don't segregate people is called following. These are the people that I follow in my particular case. Obviously, you can use whatever different um, methods you have for how you break down the circles and what they mean, what you name them, all of that's up to you. In my case, I have this one kind of catch-all thing where if I don't have a particular person fitting a particular category, then I stick them in the following. And so that's my main biggest circle, and that's kind of the stream that I usually click on to see what's happening with people that I follow. So I would like to be able to see when I get emails from people, anybody in that particular following circle, in my message list. 
And so, as you can see right here, I have it show. And everything else right now, pretty much, for the sake of display, uh, I mean, for the sake of this presentation, it's set up to hide. That's how Google normally sets it up by default, by the way. Everything you have in terms of displaying in the actual messages is hidden. Okay? You see your labels, whatever labels you're scientifically visible in your emails, uh, uh, in the email list itself, but you do not see any circles by default. So all of this stuff is hidden. And this is where it becomes a gem. This is where it becomes useful. If I click on inbox right now, and you see my following is the only one that I have show. If I click on inbox, and I kind of scroll through some of the messages here. All of a sudden, you see this one message right here as an example. Let me make it a little bit bigger higher so you can see it easier. As you can see, this particular message has the following circle. You can see it by having a little icon here that shows a circle. But regular labels don't have this icon. They just have the colors. And circles have the color and the name of the circle. You can see it show up in the message itself. So not only can I click on following, like I was talking about earlier, where I can see all the emails from people who happen to be in this circle, but I can also, just looking at the email without clicking on any circles, it will show me visually in my display here. It will show me the circle right in the, in the list itself, right there. Okay? And so that becomes extremely useful because now you can have certain circles of people that you follow in terms of their content. If there is any kind of communication com coming to you from these people, you'll immediately be visually notified like this because they're, they're, it'll show up just like my following shows right there, right up here. It'll show up right there in your display list, immediately jumping in your face, as you can see, standing out from everything else. So if you want to be able to not only be able to get to these messages by clicking on the left side on that particular circle, but also just see as you're looking through a bunch of messages which happens to be coming from people that are in your circles and which circles, this makes it an excellent, excellent way to visually quickly see if something you need to take better care of or something special and things like that. So it's a very, very handy option. I highly recommend you use it. I do not recommend you use it in terms of turning it on for all the circles you have. In your case, it may make sense. It's all, it all depends on you. You may say, well, if it's so useful, why not turn it on for everything? Then anything coming from any of the circles will be visible. True. And you could, if that makes sense to you, if that's what you want to do. But if I have a circle of people that normally I communicate to and I don't look at their content uh, for whatever reason, then I don't necessarily want to see this jumping in my face here when they send me an email either, potentially. I'm just hypothetically speaking. So you need to make that determination based on the fact that is there any value to you or your business in being able to see emails coming from a particular circle of people? And if so, make sure you turn it on a show in, in the settings for that um, uh, settings and messages, display and messages for that particular circle. Okay? So that's, that's uh, how um, you can use circles to help you in not only organizing things but also finding things and also um, dealing with email in a little more structured format if you will okay now let's go to to um, contacts and talk about that a little bit so let's go to contacts here so I'm going to click on contacts and as you notice in contacts right here um, Normally, you, deal, you, you have your, on the left side, you have your different groups, whatever different groups you have set up. And if you click on the group, then it shows you the, you know, the group name. It shows you the people who are in the group. And uh, you can add additional people to remove people. And, of course, when you email people, you can email them based on a group that's set up in, in, in contact groups here. And um, you just simply give it the group name in the two field or, or CC or BCC and you can go ahead and email these people. The, the interesting thing is they when they added circles as you can see in addition to 
different contexts and stuff, I also have circles here. And so if I actually click on circles, for example, like actors, then notice that what's happening is these people come up, like Kevin Spacey and Matthew McConaughey and Ethan Martin. I did not put these people in my contacts, even though I'm, um, I can see them here. And as you can see on the right side here, it shows me that these people are in my actor circle. And obviously, since I clicked on it, they would all have to be. But the interesting thing about that, I did not enter them into my contacts, yet here they are show up. And so if I had, for example, let's look at another example, like my take on online clients from my restaurant business. I have all these different people that uh, send, that when, I, when they send orders through my take on online system, I wind up getting them. And as you may or may not know, uh, whenever you get email, if people have an email address that Google has a profile associated with, they show you a little uh, thing in the top right corner showing the picture and showing some of the latest uh, communication with them, things like that. Bottom line is it's very easy to add them to a circle right from there, right from that email. So what I do is when I get uh, uh, online orders from clients, then I automatically add them into the circle called Take On Online Clients. And that way I have a whole list. As you can see, not only do I have their list, I also have their emails. So I can communicate with them afterwards, so on and so forth. Now, I could communicate with them on Google+. I mean, that would be one way to do it. But if I wanted to email them something as a group, I have a challenge because, yes, I can go ahead and um, let me just show you an example here. Let's say I have a uh, – there's nothing here that says – TO clients. You see right here, I mean, there's nothing in my uh, groups that says TO clients, but I do have a TO client circle. So if we go back to, to show you as an example, actually, if I go back to Gmail, and when I click Compose, here I can indicate the name of a person. Like I could type in you know, Mark, for example, and they come up, which is fine. I can also put in circle name. So if I put in clients, which is one of my circles, you can see that I have, it shows me as an option, call clients. But if I try to put in TO clients as uh, basically my circle name that I have, nothing comes up because you can only email to individuals or to groups. So here's another tip for you. All you have to do to circumvent that situation, which is extremely simple, is you go to contacts, step one, I wish Google would make content be a little faster. Um, once you get to context, you go to your um, circles, and let's say I wanted to email everybody in this in this duo clients, for example, the 333 people. So I click on there, and it comes up with you know everybody here. What I can do here is simply one click to select everybody, okay, and then over here I can say I want to add them, create a new group called. Take out online clients just to show you. So it's a little different name. I'm going to create a new group with all these people in it. Okay. A few clicks. Type in a name. It says it has been created. Now if I jump back to Gmail and if I click compose and if I start typing take out Take out online clients. There it is right there. Now I have a group, take out online clients, that happens to have exactly the same email addresses of all the people that I initially added to my circle. So I didn't have the group before, and I couldn't email to the circle. I only had a circle. But now using this approach, with just a few clicks, you can easily take a circle, turn it into a group, and then subsequently you can actually email that group directly from uh, Gmail. Very handy, very simple, works great. The only thing I wanted to also caution you is do not ever, ever do what I'm showing here in terms of putting something like this in your two line. Okay, you have the BCC, so you always, 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 if you didn't hear that right, I'm going to say it again, always, you indicate people, you put like your own name in here if you want, okay, and then in the BCC line, that's where you put your circles, I mean, your, your group name, okay? Always do that.
your clients will thank you, your friends will thank you, everybody will thank you. Do not ever put in the to field or CC field a huge list of people's addresses and completely compromise their privacy. I know a lot of people are doing it, and I love, you know, a lot of you get emails with jokes and this and that from a bunch of people that have that. Do not do this. Do people a favor, do yourself a favor. Always use BCC when you want to email a bunch of people. That way nobody gets mad, nobody complains. But that's a simple, this is how simple it is to do something like that. So this is the kind of a little bit of a, an example of using circles within Gmail and within contacts. And so if you kind of, if you have any questions on this, certainly get back to me. I'll, I'll clarify it if it's not real clear. But it's relatively straightforward. And if you start using this thing, uh, then you'll see just how useful it can become. It's already built in. You just happen not to have all of this activated because by default, Google doesn't show any of these um, circles visible in the messages themselves. And that's where it becomes really useful, in my opinion. So just to show you an example, here's an uh, email from a friend of mine. Um, and as you can see on the right side here, I have his picture, his name, obviously, which also is a link to his profile on Google+. It shows you which groups he is part of. I mean, I'm sorry, not groups, sorry, which circles he's part of right there. And I can, you know, start a hangout with him or chat, send him an email, I mean, a bunch of different options. But the bottom line is this is how I normally, when I get my uh, business entries from people I don't know, then I just simply pull down the menu here and either set up a new circle or put them in an existing circle. Also notice that, you know, I have most of my circle names here are all in alphabetical order, something you may not have. I'm not going to repeat something I did in a prior hangout, so look at my prior videos to see how com you can make that work because it's much, much more convenient to use to be able uh, to do so, uh, having them alphabetized. And I don't know why Google doesn't do it automatically, they should, but there is a way to set it up so everything is nicely organized in terms of alphabetical order, and then it makes it very easy to find and select what you want. Okay, so the second thing is the tips uh, as we're coming up on the end here. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was, uh, uh, let's see, we, we're going to talk about um, circling and we're going to talk about David Amerland. Excellent. So one of my dearest friends from UK, David Amerland, who many of you know and the ones that don't know, I definitely recommend you do find out. Um, part of the problem with David Hopefully he's not listening here. Um, actually, I'm just joking. He doesn't have any problems. But one of the problems I have with using his name, and you would have the same problem with anybody else's name you use like this, is that David is a great name, but it also happens to be a name that a lot of people have. And so what's happening is when I, whenever you normally need to enter somebody else's name, uh, if you go to Google+, let me just jump out of here, Take my daughter to dentist today, and Google refuses to, to do that, so we'll do it this way. If we go to Google Plus, oh, by the way, we don't need to go to Google Plus. We can do it from here. So remember, you always have the share button, so you don't have to jump to Google Plus every time you want to do Google Plus Plus. You can just click on share, and as soon as you click share, it comes up, so you don't have to jump to Google Plus. Uh, all part of the same experience, living in Gmail, as they call it. So over here, we can just do a post. So if I wanted to send something to David, I could just use his name with a plus or an and sign first. So I can put in plus David, and David Emerlin comes up as number one in this particular case. But if I wanted to send an email, uh, I mean, if it's part of some post, and some other David name comes up first, because a lot of times his name would not come up first, then obviously I have to type in that, and I have to type in this to get to uh, you know, his name so I can select it. A, an easier approach, a better approach, is when you use the at sign, use his last name instead. And see, I type in just two letters, and already his name comes up as number one. You see that? And that's basically the tip of the day today, is that you do not have to put in people's names when you refer to them specifically using um, the uh, you know typing them in the order they appear you can type it in using the other part for example let's say I wanted to uh, let's see what Martin comes up with he comes up first how about John let's say we use a name like John 
Okay. Well, I happen to have a number of different Johns that I deal with. Okay. So if I wanted to send something to John Hanlon, as you can see, he comes in as number two. John Buttero comes in as number three. But if I start typing in instead of John, I start typing in like this, just a few letters. Then John Buttero comes in as number one. So the moral of this and, and the example is basically use the other part of the name, specifically maybe starting with the last name, to make it much faster and easier for you to come up with whoever you're trying to talk to, and then you just select them from the list so it comes up faster. So that's that, and uh, that's what I'm doing with David all the time now because I use his name quite a bit. We do quite a bit of, of conversing, and a lot of times you know, all these other Davids show up, and when I use you know his last name to start with, it, it he comes up right at the top, which is exactly what I want. So Google is using certain algorithm to make things uh, so it can figure out what makes sense at different points in time, but they don't always succeed. And so using this approach seems to work really really well. So that's the David Amerlin connection here. As you can see, there's no connection to anything else, as I mentioned in my preview for this. Um, the other thing that I was going to uh, quickly mention is uh, there's a new initiative that I'm going to start up called uh, hangoutschool.com. And uh, initially, the, it's geared for people who are doing homeschooling. I'm doing homeschooling with my son, and um, my daughter has some special needs where we have some tutors, and it's been a challenge to be able to find people to. Uh, or to find schools, I should say, which can handle and take care of our needs. And in my son's schools, which is what they call ALE or, or alternative learning environment, that's a school that uh, is specifically set up for smaller classes and things like that. But at the same time, it has a very limited number of courses. And so because of that and because of what Hangouts allow you to do, uh, and with my doing a little experience uh, last summer where I did uh, my own class to teach kids how to program using Hangouts as the platform, basically, I started this website called hangoutschool.com. And essentially, it's going to be for not only kids, it's going to be for basically any age. And the, ba the main concept is to enable people who are looking to get some education to be able to do so from the convenience of their home or office do so very inexpensively compared to you know regular school you might want to take classes in and at the same time be able to accomplish exactly what they need to do uh, using this environment and so and it's totally doable using hangouts because as I mentioned I've done it before so I've put together this kind of introduction here if you go to hangoutschool.com number one you can just click on a button to start a hangout with me right there at the top uh, which a lot of people don't know they can do from their own websites. They don't need to go to Google Plus, so on and so forth. You can actually start a Hangout directly from a website like that. Second thing is it kind of t tells a little bit about what this is about, how it works, and you know there is a group of teachers. One of the things that I'm I'm kind of like I'm going to be one of the people teaching, but also kind of a, a middleman, where I'm going to be talking to all the uh, potential teachers. Like I got a few people right now that already signed up for this. And these are the people that I know myself, or at least was introduced to by somebody else, who have references and track record uh, in terms of what kind of stuff they teach and uh, how well they teach it. And so my concept is not to bring in anybody who wants to teach, but bring in people who are going to be interviewed, who are going to be, they'll, they'll have to specify at least several uh, references, and also. Um, Basically, they need to pass my own at this point in time. I'm like the moderator, if you will. My own um, checks and balances here to make sure that they can be part of this school environment. And once they do pass it, then they get on this list of teachers, and they will be able to have full control over the curriculum, uh, curriculum and also um, how they want to teach, what they want to teach, because I'm not... I can do some programming stuff and computer internet related things. Uh, I'm going to have some classes on Google Plus, Hangouts, things that I know extremely well and I'm competent in teaching, but I'm not going to be uh, doing anything having to do with music theory or piano playing or anything like that because that's not what I do. 
but for example in this particular case this Katie as you can see at the bottom of the list she's absolute gem when it comes to teaching kids music and I'm sure she's got some adults as well but my experience have been with her and kids including kids that have some special problems like autism things like that she's absolutely just wonderful when it comes to both what she teaches and the method of how she teaches so she's going to be one of the people providing education in this particular environment and um, you know we have another lady here Angela that uh, deals with um, reading and writing topics and some art topics uh, uh, Maxine over there she's just absolutely killer in terms of art in, in, in how she presents art and how she teaches art just wonderful and so we're gonna have some of these classes to start up in school and then it's gonna be kind of an ongoing process with more teachers coming on with more classes being offered as well as uh, both kids and adults uh, participating in terms of what they're interested in and so I'm going to be constantly on the lookout for competent people to handle the teaching part and of course promoting the school in terms of the uh, student part uh, due to the limitations of hangouts regular hangouts uh, and also because of the considerations uh, that every single class should be fairly small uh, we're going to have one teacher in class and nine students so that's going to be the ratio one to nine maximum and we're going to try to make it so there's going to be always going to be nine students in each class and then of course classes there's going to be multiple teachers so you have potential for it's not going to be a situation where for example you know you want to take a Spanish class and now it already the the class has been filled and you don't have any more choices no it's just going to be another teacher teaching Spanish and you can still participate uh, and so there's going to be over time as this thing builds out there's going to be plenty of choices so the current environment when you come to school like my son has and people tell you you can only take five classes and you're done uh, not going to be happening on this thing you're going to be able to take any classes you want whenever you want however you want and then we'll actually work together with the teachers and the students to figure out the actual schedules and make sure that that works okay for everybody so you can look at the teachers profile here by just clicking on that and I scroll through them and read them you can also if you're a student or thinking about taking classes you can uh, use this uh, sign up form which is right here on the page as you can see you just fill it in directly it's got very few questions nothing major and mostly what you're trying to do also you can use a QR code to scan to get this form into your uh, cell phone if you wish and fill it out there basically you're registering you're not really signing up for any classes here you're just registering with the school with the hangout school and then indicating as one of the questions here is what classes would you like to uh, see being offered so you can say you're interested in science class or math class or uh, uh, music class whatever you're interested in as you as you register here and then based on that we're gonna actively look to try to find qualified teachers and I mean qualified very seriously here uh, to make sure that they can offer you the classes you're interested in taking so I suggest that if you have even mild interest or know somebody who has interest in participating in uh, taking a class from their own home from their own computer then go ahead and have them register right here and then we'll be able to deal with them there's not going to be any spam or anything like that so don't worry about uh, um, indicating any of your contact information because it will strictly be used for communicating regarding the school situation and then if you're if you think you're qualified to teach classes then there is another form here down the bottom where there is you know a few more questions but also a very short form basically to get some basic information from you so we can start uh, we can do the initial interview and kind of take it from there there's absolutely no guarantee that if you want to teach that should be accepted and um, if you're asking a question who the heck am I to uh, play God here the bottom line here is I have a lot of uh, both background and uh, um, experience and interest in this particular topic also I'm a technology person so and also I'm kind of started the whole concept so not that I'm gonna play any kind of favorites or anything but to me it's extremely important that people who come to learn can actually learn from people who are totally qualified to do so and I'm not looking for anybody who has you know 15 year tenure in some school and they're you know part of some kind of a 
you know, school union, whatever, that, uh, and, you know, everybody thinks they're great and wonderful. What I need is I need to have people who are great and wonderful based on the students they're teaching. I don't care about anything else. I don't care what, what kind of experience you have or what kind of education you have. I really don't care about that. I care about the fact that you've taught classes before and people who were taking your classes were extremely happy to have you as a teacher. If you fit that criteria, then you'll be totally uh, accepted in teaching at hangoutschool.com. So the classes, uh, if you want to see what the current classes are, I think we have the initial schedule kind of tentatively set here uh, with some dates, but it's kind of just starting as we speak, basically. Uh, so you can see, you know, like one of the classes, uh, there's a little web for kids class that I'm going to be teaching that doesn't cost anything. Other classes like this are 12 bucks for an hour class, 10 bucks. So we're going to be pretty much, I would say, within no more than $15 per one hour class, which I think is pretty reasonable as far as the uh, tutoring rates go and, and the teaching rates go. And it'll show you that what kind of class it is. It'll show you um, how many classes there will be, the age range approximately. So uh, you can easily also get the information here by scanning one of the QR codes on the site. So if you have any questions, we're pretty excited about uh, launching this. Uh, the website is up, and you can certainly sign up as a teacher if you qualify or if you want to qualify and uh, as a student. If you're thinking about taking any of the classes, I encourage all the parents to certainly look into this. Uh, we're going to have some classes this summer, but certainly going to have more classes come um, um, September. The idea is to supplement whatever homeschooling um, situation you might have or would like to have, or just additional help with tutoring. I mean, there's di different cases why this makes a lot of sense. For people to be able to do and of course the beauty is that you can do all of this from the uh, comfort and convenience of your own home so you can take these classes there some of the classes will have to do with uh, technology which you can have your employees at your job I mean at, at your uh, company for example have your employees be uh, taking some classes that way and you know makes it more convenient instead of sending employees out for three days to take some class somewhere this way they can take these hourly classes where it's more convenient for the business. So there's many, many reasons why this makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, as the thing expands, there's more and more teachers, then you'll have many, many more options to do this in this kind of environment. So again, very excited to launch this, hangoutschool.com. If you have any interest, please go ahead and sign up. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. And with that, I think we're going to quit right now. So as always, uh, we're doing this every other week. So next week, uh, I'm not doing it, but there's going to be another um, PCS Hangout in two weeks from now. Same time, same YouTube channel. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.